Hi Sanctuary Kids, my name is Gretchen and I just want to say that we love and miss you guys very much. But this morning we're going to have a great time learning some new Crime Stopper tools. We're going to continue learning the Ten Commandments and today we're on number six. In your Crime Stopper backpacks you will be receiving a whistle and we will have it ready for you when we see you again. So the question of the morning is, are you ready? Stand on up and let's get ready to have some fun. Hi Sanctuary Kids, we miss you. Come on, stand up. We know that you're going to Well, you have an odd looking nose. Oh, well, um, your clothes never matches. Well, you're not good at sports. Oh. Yes, I am! Whoa, whoa, what is happening here? Sally took my favorite Lego set and I was already playing with them. Oh my goodness, you had been playing all day. Whoa. It was my turn! Whoa, whoa, we'll talk about that later, but were y'all calling each other mean names? Well, could it be that maybe one of you were hurt or one of you were mad? Yeah, that's it. I was just so mad. How can a friend do that to my toys? Yeah, how can a friend not share? Okay, listen, what, I know that y'all are hurt and you're mean, but what does it make you to think that you could call each other mean names and you're a child of God? Well, I mean, if you put it like that. You know what, I got an idea. I have a experiment. Okay. Okay. So, this is the experiment I'm gonna show you. This is Sally. See how nice and white she is and no indentions and no wrinkles or anything? Yeah. And this was before Sally was called Mean Names. Uh, but wait, she started it. <gasps> I mm. did not! No. You have to realize Sally is affected by words that you say. Yes. And since she's affected, you need to say something nice to her. Oh. <laughs> well, I like your shoes. Mm. Wow, thanks. Now, this is Sally, but you know, she really feels great because of the compliment you gave her. But you know what? You said two things that were mean, so you uh, need to apologize one more time. Say something nice to her. Um, well, you're actually not that bad at soccer. You play pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. All right, that's great. And Sally really feels good with the compliments that you gave her. But if you notice, now she's kind of wrinkly. Oh. She's got a little bit of indentions. you got to realize that your words <laughs> have a lasting effect on her life. Hmm. Do y'all get it? Mm. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> okay, well, I've got one more experiment I gotta give you about words, so give me just a second. All right. Ooh, a stool. Is that my toothpaste? I love my kids. Okay, listen. This is a tube of toothpaste. Wow. I knew it. Okay, you're gonna Take be the tube, on. and the paste that comes out are gonna be the words that you've said, okay? So. Okay. Uh, you have a big nose. <gasps> Your clothes don't match. Oh. You're not good at soccer or sports. Oh. I don't like you. Oh. You're being mean. I don't want to be your friend anymore. So you've said all of these mean words, but then you realize, you know, I didn't really mean to say that. I want to take those words back. Yeah. So you know what? We're going to try and take those words back. Put it back in the tube. Put it back in the tube. Maybe yeah. we... Nobody, nobody heard me really say that, even though I said it out loud. So let's put it back in. Oh, I didn't need to say that. Oh my goodness. It's, it's not, not working. No, it's not working too well. Use like, your hand. I'm trying. It's not, the, the words are not going back in. <laughs> it's getting messy. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's what happens with words. Oh. It is impossible to take back the words that you've said. Oh. Once you say something, even if you didn't mean it, you can't take it back. So even if we get mad or hurt, we have to remember that the words that we have, that we have said, have an effect on one another and other people. So we are children, God's children. And we need to be kind with everything that we say and everything that we do. Even when we get upset or feel like we're allowed to, to be mean because someone else started, God created both of you. Both of you He created. And He still loves us very, very much. So when you're mean and you don't value your friends, like God does because He values each and every one of us. He doesn't, He's not pleased when we don't value, value each other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do we value our friends or anybody else? We're kind, we're, we honor them, 
we respect them, we speak kind words. Now do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Sally, I'm sorry for not sharing earlier. It's okay. And I'm sorry for not asking to play with you. Yes. I really do value you and our friendship. Yay! Me too, Sally. Let's go outside and ride our bikes. Woo! Yeah. Let's go! Whoa, 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 wait! Clean up your Legos! Good morning, kids. Today we're going to talk about the sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill. Now when I think of that commandment, I think of the story of Joseph. Now as the story goes, Joseph was one of 12 uh, sons. And you know what? He was what seemed like kind of spoiled. He was loved by his father and he was given a coat of many colors. So as the story goes, Joseph's walking around checking on his brothers and you know what? His brothers got so sick and tired of this guy that they decided to kill him. So what happened in, the, in their hearts? They started to become jealous and angry. They were getting annoyed because uh, he got this special treatment and they couldn't take it anymore. And they weren't handling their feelings very well, so they decided to kill him. But thankfully, they didn't. What they did do was sell him into slavery. So Joseph kind of got a raw deal. Now, while he was in slavery, he was uh, set in uh, Potiphar's house, who was the captain of the guard. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 39, verse 2, it says, And the Lord was with Joseph. And he found favor and was in second in charge and second in command over all of the house. And he did these great things. But you know what? While he was there, he was lied on by Potiphar's wife. She falsely accused him of something. And you know what happened to him then? He was thrown into prison. What a raw deal. Joseph keeps getting these bad things happen to him. But you know what? While he was in prison, the Bible says... In Genesis chapter 39, verse 21, the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So while he was there, everything that he did, he was blessed. He found favor and he was set above everybody else in that prison. He was set in charge. And as the story goes, it's pretty cool because Joseph had this gift. While he was in prison, uh, some of the king's men, the baker and the butler, were also put in prison. And they had these dreams that they couldn't figure out. And Joseph interpreted these dreams. And he said to the butler, remember me when you go to the Pharaoh. Basically, he's like, hey, put in a good word with Pharaoh after you're gone. So he interpreted the dreams. The dreams came to pass. And he left. And you know what? Guess what? The, bake, uh, the baker forgot the butler forgot. And from that point, he had to stay in prison for another two years. So let's review this a lot, of, a lot of bum deals that Joseph got. He was betrayed by his brothers. As a slave, he was falsely accused and thrown in the prison. While he was in prison, he did all these cool things, but then he was forgotten and left to rot in prison some more. So if anyone had the right to be upset, it was this guy. Okay? He had some stuff happen to him. But that's not the end of the story. It gets a little better. While he was in prison and sitting there, the Pharaoh had this dream that nobody could interpret. He didn't know what to do. And while he was talking, bam, the uh, butler, he remembered. There's this guy in prison who could interpret dreams. So Pharaoh calls for him. Uh, Joseph, he shows up. He interprets the dream. He tells them that there's a, a famine coming, and so the Pharaoh right then and there puts him in charge so they can prepare, okay? And so they can uh, get the food storage is all up. So he basically becomes second in command over all of Egypt, okay? That's a big deal. So he went from this little, little kid who had nothing, all of a sudden all these bad things happen, and now he's second in command over all of Egypt. That's pretty, that's pretty big, okay? And so uh, as the time went on, the famine happened, Everybody has to come to Egypt because that's the only place that has food. Guess who else came? Joseph's brothers, okay? These brothers really affected Joseph, okay? They, they altered the whole course of his life. And so they come, 
They're wanting food. They're sitting before him. And right then and there, he has the power to destroy them. He has the power to kill them like they wanted to do to him. But you know what? He didn't. He didn't lower himself to that level. Joseph stated, as for you, in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, he says, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Okay? God used Joseph and all of his problems to help save the land. Joseph put God first, and even before his own desires, even before his own desires for revenge and murder or whatever the case may be, he still kept putting God first. Sometimes people are going to do bad things to us, but that doesn't give us the right to do bad things too. Uh, God loves them just like he loves you. He values each human life, and so should we. We had awesome demonstration and examples earlier today about the importance of, of life and valuing life and treating each other kind and, and with compassion. And so uh, what I want to do now in, in closing is I want to pray. And let's pray for uh, these things in our lives, okay? Let's pray. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for your blessing. Lord, you see our hearts and we're thankful for how much you love us. Just as much as you love us, all the other people in the world, Lord, we're not perfect and you love them. I pray, Lord, help us to see your compassion, Lord, that we would value life, Lord, that we would put you first. We thank you for your goodness in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We're about to go to another song, so why don't you guys stand and get ready. God bless you.
Sanctuary Kids, how do you value life? Amaya and Lorian, how do you value life? Be kind to my parents. Show respect and kindness. Some ways I show that I value others is by showing love. For example, I show love by setting up the movie day for my mom on her birthday. Other ways I show that I value others are is that I show em empathy and that I am considerate about others. These are ways that I show others that I love and value them. Okay, so what are some ways that you can value life? By helping other people. By loving one another. Aubrey? Mm -hmm. something. How I value lives is I respect others. Uh, I use my words to help and not harm. And I do acts of kindness. For example, my, for when my brother is sad, I Sometimes make him dumplings or I give him a treat.